In this ImageQuantiel version 10 tutorial video, we will be performing a band intensity comparison with no normalization. Specifically, we will be performing the following steps. Importing our image, creating our lanes, performing a background subtraction, detecting our bands, and exporting our results. The first step in this analysis is to open up the Gel and Blot Analysis module in ImageQuantiel version 10. Once open, we can utilize this button on the right side to open up our image of interest. Once the image is open, I like to look at this 2D rendering up here just to ensure that there is no saturation in the image. Saturation would be shown as a bright orange signal, and we can confirm there is none in this image. The next step in the analysis is to define our lanes. We can do so by selecting that step in the workflow along the left side. The first thing I like to do once we get to this step is to adjust my brightness and contrast to make sure that I can see the low abundance bands in the lanes which I'm trying to define. I usually do this by pulling on the maximum until I can see those bands clearly. That looks good there. The next step is to actually define our lanes, and we can do so by choosing how many lanes that we want in the new box. In this case, we will choose 11 because we have 11 lanes. You can start in the top left corner, click and drag to the bottom right, until you have your lanes properly defined. To make sure that our lanes look proper, we can also readjust our brightness and contrast back to the auto settings to ensure that they look well here. If we need to fine tune the position of our defined lanes, you can do so with the edit box function here. This allows us to pull on the four corners of this box to ensure that it lines up with the lanes that we've defined. You can also edit individual lanes if you'd like to as well. And this allows us to move individual lanes. We can also adjust individual lane widths as shown here. So you just simply have to choose to edit individual lanes and you can adjust the position of that lane. So right now we're looking at lane four and you can adjust the width of that lane individually. Once we're happy with the position of our lanes, we can move on to the next step, which is background subtraction. Here in the interface, we can see our image that we're analyzing, as well as intensity profiles for a selected lane. As we move along the intensity profile, you can see a yellow line associated in the image. What that does is that allows us to correlate individual peaks in the intensity profile with bands that we see in the image. If you want to select a different lane to see the intensity profile, go ahead and select that lane. Next, we can move over here to the right and see our different background subtraction methods. We have rolling ball, rubber band, constant value, or image rectangle. I almost always use rolling ball because it allows us to have a localized background subtraction for each individual band. In this case, we can use a fairly large radius to be able to subtract and we can see once we apply this, we can see the background that's subtracted. I usually select display background so you can see how much background is taken away. Once you choose a radius, we can see how this affects both our high abundance bands, as we're seeing here, as well as our low abundance bands, to make sure that we have an effective background subtraction. Once you're happy with the background subtraction, go ahead and select to deselect displaying background. And we now have our background subtracted for doing our analysis and band detection. Once we're happy with our background subtraction, we can move on to the next step, which is band detection. You can see here along the right side, we have three different parameters that we can adjust to be able to refine the band definition. I typically like to start with the defaults and see how that works. You can see here that we have detected some of our bands, but there are others that we're interested in and others that we'd like to take away. We can start by taking away this band by looking in the intensity profile, right clicking, choosing to delete that band. From here, we can manually edit these different parameters to be able to refine this and get more of our bands detected or we can manually add those bands, which I'll show you how to do here. Start with lane one. We can see two different bands. All you have to do is simply click where it starts and drag to where it finishes, and that band is added. We can now do that for every other band that we're interested in. We can also adjust where that band starts and finishes. I typically like to show where it goes back to background.
Sometimes you'll get a situation like this where your band looks like it's melding into a different one that's slightly lower or slightly above it. Here you have to use your discretion on where the end of that band really is. Now that we've defined our bands, we can see that we started to collect some data in the data table. Most importantly, we have the volume which we can use to compare our relative intensity of our bands. Here we have the option of directly copying this and pasting into Excel, or if you'd like to, you can adjust the parameters that we have defined down here. In order to do that, we can go directly to results, and you can see here that we can adjust what parameters that we want to have within that table. So for example, if we wanted to get rid of the position in the units, clean this up a bit, we can do so here. Now we can directly export this to Excel, or we can go right back to our bands where we were, copy, and paste into Excel.